Namaste, this is Aditya and welcome to Shankam Tech channel. In my previous videos, I have introduced the concept of OSGA services. And in this video, I am going to take one example and show you how exactly you can implement OSGA custom services. This video is part of AEM Tutorials for Beginners playlist, the link for which I have given it out in the description box. Please check it out if you are interested. And please subscribe to my channel if you are liking these videos. Let's get started with the presentation. So as I have explained earlier, there are three parts to the OSGI service implementation. So the first part is the interface part, the second part is the implementation part and the third part is the injection part. Okay, so let's see all of these in the code right now. So I have already written a code, I am going to explain that code to you right now. So what I have done is in my code base, uh, there is a folder called services. Okay, if this folder is not available by default, you can also create this folder called services. You can name it anything, just I named it as services. Okay, so then in this services folder, I created uh, uh, two files. So one is the my service. So this is the interface. Okay, and then in I also created a IMPL folder, which is the implementation folder under the services. And here I created another uh, uh, class called my service IMPL. So this is the interface and this is the implementation. Okay, so let me show you the interface first. Okay, so as I have told uh, the interface as its name suggests is just an interface between its implementation and the outside world. Okay, so it's just the uh, interface between these two worlds. So what do we have as part of this interface is just the declaration of the method. Okay, so all the methods which an interface could have and which can be accessed by the outside world. Okay, so the implementation could have 10 uh, methods, but uh, all those 10 methods need not be exposed to the outside world, right? Only uh, we uh, only two methods might be exposed to the outside world. So in that case, we just define those two methods here. So what are the methods which outside world can execute is what we are going to define as part of the interface. Okay, so this is just the declaration and, uh, the, and the code will not be there in as part of this interface. And if you observe, we call it public interface. We don't call it public class. Instead, we call it public interface and give the interface name. Okay, so then let's go into the implementation part. Okay, so this is where we actually define what that method should do. For example, here in this print, print logger method, I am actually logging the uh, logging some text. Okay, so just the text successful. So whenever this method is called, this logger will be called and it will actually log, just log that the test is successful. So this is just for testing uh, or to demo how the services work. I have written a simple uh, method and simple service. Okay, so this is how uh, the service uh, we can uh, define. Okay, and if you observe carefully in this public class, we gave the class name and we are saying implements my service, right? So this is where we are saying uh, this IMPL is implementing this my service and uh, this implementation why we are saying is uh, this uh, IDE will mandate us to define this method here. Okay, so if we don't declare this uh, implements IMPL, then the IDE won't mandate this. So what do we mean by that is if I don't say this uh, IMPL my service and if I don't uh, define this method and if I compile the code, then the code executes fine. Okay, if, if this implements uh, um, in, in this uh, class is not there. If I have uh, put this back, this implement my service, if it is there, okay, and if I don't define this print logger class, then it will throw us a compilation error. Okay, so just uh, for us to throw these compilation errors and to mandate uh, all the uh, mandate uh, uh, whatever methods are mandatory, we are de defining those methods, we are writing the code inside that methods or not uh, to make sure uh, uh, that is happening, we use this implements my service and it's all at the build level. Okay, when we are building the code, it will throw the compilation errors, that's it. Okay. But what we also need to do is we need to somehow inform our OSGA framework, right? Uh, that this service is the implementation of the other service, right? This class is the implementation of the other class. So that's what we wanted to say uh, to the OSGA framework. Okay, so how do we do that is we create something called as this at component. 
okay so we call this as the declarative services okay so what we are doing essentially is we are declaring uh, that uh, this is a uh, class uh, which is the implementation of the other class okay so that uh, to to say that to the osj framework we use this at the rate component uh, 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 this thing at the right component annotation okay so here in this at the right component annotation we are saying what is the service which it implements or extends okay so the service name is my service right so uh, so this service uh, the, this uh, at the right component is defined as part of this class right in this class code so automatically osj framework will understand that uh, this class is either extended from or implemented based on this class okay it can be either of them it can either be extended from this class or this class might be implementation of this class so uh, so it is a, it is a way to say to the osj framework that uh, this is the dependency we have okay and uh, we have here also the immediate true which means that immediately after the deployment the object will be created for this particular class okay so that's what we are saying a immediate is equal to true okay so now let's see how the servlet code is there and how we can reference this particular uh, uh, class in the servlet code okay so if you see here this is a sample servlet code which i have written so here also what i am doing is in the do post method of the servlet i am just logging some loggers just to make sure that this servlet code has triggered and then i am calling the print logger method of the service now how do we reference the service so at the rate reference is the annotation okay so at using this at the rate reference we will reference this particular service and in this service we have this print logger method and we are calling that method okay so and this is how uh, a service can be referenced from another uh, class okay so now how exactly in the back end this entire code is working okay so to understand that uh, we will go back to our presentation so this is divided into two parts so the first is at the build time okay so now what we have done is we have written our code so this is our uh, interface and this is our service implementation we have written this code okay and we build this code and that build is part of some aem bundle right and uh, once we build the code a aem bundle will get created and that bundle will get deployed into the aem application right and then it will follow certain life cycle so first that bundle will go into installed status then it finds all the dependencies uh, whether all the dependencies are resolved or not if that bundle is dependent on some other classes on other bundles uh, whether all those bundles are active or not and the dependencies are resolved or not that it will check and once all those are completed it comes into active status and soon after it comes into active status what it does is it will create some table like this it's not exactly like table we can but we can imagine it to be like this okay and it will it will uh, note in its memory uh, that this my service impl is dependent on this my service or is the implementation of this my service or extension of this my service like that it will write down here in the in its memory so how is it able to write it down it is able to write it down because we have defined it here okay at the right component service equal to my service so once it sees this line what it does is it will take this class it will put it in this left hand side and it will take this class and it will put it in the right hand side and it will create a relationship or mapping between these two classes so all this is happening at the build time whenever you deployed the aem bundle into aem application it creates all this mapping in its memory so this is the first step then in the second step in the run time what happens is our servlet code is called okay so how do we call this servlet code okay so we go to the postman and we hit the send button okay we hit this end point which will trigger this servlet right so this servlet code will get triggered and it will see this line at the right reference okay which means that some service has been referenced so if you see here what we have referenced here is the interface class it's not the implementation class we have referred it is the interface class which we have referred right and using this interface we are calling this print logger right 
But then how does it understand internally that uh, this interface class is the, uh, the corresponding implementation is this class? How does it understand that? Okay. So to understand that what it does is it will go into this memory again. It created this memory mapping right uh, between this implementation class and service class. So that will be referenced. Okay. So once it uh, this servlet code gets triggered and once the, it, it would see this say, at the rate reference line, it would come into this memory and it would see this is the interface which is being referenced and what is the corresponding implementation that it will check. Okay. And it will create an object for that implementation. So it will not create the my service uh, interface object. It will actually create the object for the implementation and it will pass that object and that object will be injected by the OSJ framework into this, uh, this variable. And that is how the implemented object, implementation classes object is coming into this variable. And once you call this printer logger and that is how your code gets executed. Okay, so this is the backend flow as to how your service is being referenced and service is being instantiated. Okay, so now the uh, valid question would be what happens if we, if there are two implementations? Okay, so if it is not just my service in IMPL, let us suppose we have another implementation which is referencing the same class, which is quite possible, right? So let us suppose we, we have some certain logic to do the tax computation and the tax computation would be different in one country versus another country. And if you are uh, working for a multinational organization, you might have to write the two implementation and the service might be same. Okay, the interface might be same and the interface might say just compute tax. But uh, depending on the country, you might have to prefer one implementation over another. So if there are two implementations of the same interface, then how exactly AM, going to, AM is going to resolve uh, which implementation to pick. Okay, so that we will take up in our next class. That's it for today. Jai Hind.